Well, just make up your mind. Figure it out. You're moving bags around. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sweet start to the episode there. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's the Brass Tags Podcast. We're your hosts, Rick and Adam. Uh, I'm Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's coming in hot. We're finally back together again in this lovely studio of ours after a long uh, a long quarantine. We were good boys. You months, know. Months. We stayed uh, we stayed separated for a good period of time, but I mean we felt like I don't know, we've we've distanced ourselves enough at this point. I think it's okay to start resuming and doing shit normally again. It's essential. Yeah. Did I say did I say it was episode forty yet? Cause it's episode forty. Oh. In case you were wondering. But yeah. It's been a very eventful week, been an eventful uh, couple of months. Shit has not stopped uh, going downhill as far as 2020 is concerned. But, uh, you know, all that being said, it's just nice to be in the same room again. I want to say that right now because that fucking distance, it sucks. And Adam and I have a very particular type of chemistry. And, you know, we kind of <laughs> shut up. We need we need to be in close quarters for the, to, to make this thing work. In general, it's just, it's nice to come back to a routine. Yeah. That's what it's called. We uh, did a nice little live walk over to the uh, liquor store. So if you if you caught our uh, Facebook live stream earlier, you kind of got to see a little bit of uh, my work area and, you know, kind of where, you know, the area that I work in. You know, I, I tell a lot of stories from work. So I like to sometimes give some uh, kind of some like in real life interaction. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. It, I mean, you, it was pretty in depth. I would say. Yeah, as as Adam would say, I I, I did a lot of doxing. Mm, there was left and right. Whether it was intentional or not remains to be seen. I'll never tell. But uh, you know what? I was. <laughs> I felt like an asshole this morning when I woke up because I always I always wake up and the first thing I do is I uh, I scroll through social media and all that other horse shit, and I kind of noticed something about myself. Um, it's another unfavorable characteristic that I have, but I think it's something that we all have. So basically what was happening was I was scrolling through Facebook and inevitably this happened. It seems to be like on a weekly basis up to this point, but like, you know, you scroll through Facebook and inevitably you're always going to see the whole like, oh damn, still can't believe it's real. All right, peace. So, and so you'll be missed, bless up and all this other shit. And I'm going through the comments because the first thing that comes into my head is like, I don't know this person, but I want to know how they died, you know? And so you start scrolling through the comments to see if anyone's bold enough to do it, you know, to just blatantly be like, what happened? And sure enough, dude, I was scrolling down and I see this comment. It's like, all right, all right, all right. Sorry this happened, but what happened? How did how this person die? And I'm just like, thank you, dude, because it's... It's it's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't like to put all of my shit out there like that. If somebody dies in my life, I'm not going to go straight to social media and be like, oh, guys, so-and-so, you know, oh, gone too soon, but I'm going to leave you with this cliffhanger and not tell you exactly what happened. It's like making a, a song about it, maybe. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like- Some uh, people have done that. Well, like Mr. Mrs. Robinson, you know, it's about an older broad fucking a younger what are you guy. About? The fucking Puff Daddy made a song. He's missing- Yeah, when he ripped off Sting or yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah. That was Sting, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Know. I think, well, yeah. yeah or the police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, was it Sting or the police? <sighs> if it's that, then it's both. It's Sting and the police. Well, it could have been a solo career. I don't know. I'm not going to do this with you right now. Okay. I'm not going to do this with you. Just saying. It didn't have anything to do with his loot uh, phase. I can tell you that much. Mm. Sting picking up that loot is the most pretentious fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. He should have been beaten to death with that stupid instrument. He really got into like uh, tantric sex. He was always talking about. Yeah, and have you ever seen his dick? There's no. there's pictures of his dick online, dude. That dude is not. Yeah, it's nothing to brag about at all. But we're I guess we're kind of we're kind of moving away from the point here. Like I just I just I'm sick of like all right. If you're going to go to social media and you're going to tell us like, oh, bless up, you know, gone too soon, all this other bullshit. Tell us how they died. Quit leaving us in suspense. It's it's a <laughs> it's a thirst trap in a way, right? Yeah, dude. Maybe those those people want you to reach out. They do. Of course they do. They're, it's a it's a thirst trap. And yeah, it's a it's a it's a death thirst trap. <laughs> Write that down. Uh, but Call that's in. what it is. <laughs> it's a death thir thirst trap, dude. No, you're, you're right. It's a it's 
there's many thirst traps on social media, dude. Yeah, exactly. They're not this all the sexual. Death. This is the de- no. This is the death one. That's it's right. Another thirst trap. I need attention. It's all thirst, whether it's sexual or asexual. The the attention you're getting. Stop talking with your hands like that. Who are you, Obama? This is how I always talked <laughs> since I was a kid. <laughs> Adam's, Adam's hands are flying all over the fucking place. I'm just not used to being in this room with another human. It's been it's been too long. This is how real people talk, dude. Yeah, that's true. I got, I'm kind of a weirdo. I just like I stand there and speak in a monotone most of the time. Yeah, like I'm on that dope. Speaking of dope, is we it 85 percent of communications nonverbal? I oh I don't. Fuck. It's a Seinfeld <laughs> thing. I don't know. I can't remember. Look it up. <laughs> Call in if you know. The new and improved car crash, ladies and gentlemen. That's my new favorite. I, I, I was a big fan of Stone Cold Feminist. I like the This Boy's Life drop, but... Wait you know, a minute. Are you saying the Stone Cold Feminist drop is gone? No, no, absolutely oh, not. Right. We still have it. You want to hear it? Well, we're Stone say. Cold Feminists here, and we're calling you out. That's right. But uh, yeah, no, the turkey the turkey noise followed by the car crash. It's just too good. It's too good. But I like it. I just, I'm just saying, like, you know... When I go to social media or some shit like that, I am never mysterious about what I'm trying to get across. So I hate it when people are very clearly trying to garner attention for themselves over a tragedy and you won't even give us the fucking punchline. You won't even give us the, the, I I need some kind of closure. That's the thing though. They're, they're thirst artists, dude. So they want you to interact with them and give them you know yeah they're drawing it out right they they're asking for i need to be replenished you know <laughs> reach out to me i'm thirsty dude dude it's, it's a thirst like, trap well yeah it's like a fucking vampire it, that's they've exactly got a feed what it is. we were talking about this the other day it's it's a energy vampires dude they're out there i forgot what sparked that i think it was um it might have been when i was at work like one of the customers i hate it I hate it when I'm at work and I'm like, I hand back the change or I put this shit in the bag or whatever and I hand it over to the person. I'm like, all right, have a good day. And they're like, you too. And they take like one half step and they turn around. Boy, you know, this whole virus thing, you know, you. Wh- I'm, I'm just curious about your perspective. When do you think this whole thing will blow over? Like, do I look like a fucking doctor? Do I look like a fucking virologist? I've got, yeah. I've got Janice from the Sopranos hair and I smoke a lot of pot. You can't trust me for shit. Not not at that degree. I mean, if you were selling a used wheelbarrow, I would think about, I would inspect it first, but okay, if you bring, yeah, maybe I'll buy a used wheelbarrow. <laughs> you, you would just take it on faith that I probably knew what I was talking about uh, yeah. when it came to this wheelbarrow. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple machine. That, you know. I haven't touched a wheelbarrow since like 1997. Hmm. I don't know. I, that's just like a, to me, wheelbarrows, it just seems like such a weird, like it has no common... There's no practicality for it in my life. I don't ever do anything that requires a wheelbarrow. No, I know you don't. Shut up. No, 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 no. You don't get to do that. You don't get to take a swipe at me and then just <laughs> gloss right over it. What What do you mean? <laughs> I know you, you don't. don't. Of course. I know you don't. Are you saying I don't work hard or are you trying to... No, I, of course you're not using... Well, I think you're using a fucking wheelbarrow. Well, I'm just making sure because it sounded like you were taking a fucking swipe at your boy here and I wasn't going to let that go unpunished. No, it's not a, What? Okay. If you said, oh... I used a wood chipper. I would be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any. If you said you mow the lawn, I'd be like, right. <laughs> I'm not doing that either. Well, there you go. I like to do, uh, you know, I, I, I take, I get up and I sigh mm. because I know that I have to take a shower and I have to eat and I have to do these things that like, to me seem just pointless. Like, I don't know. I, I, I would rather be a robot so I didn't have to do all this extra shit. I could just sit down behind my desk and just start learning from the time I'm awake. I, and, and technically, if I were like a fucking robot like that, if I were sem- completely symbiotic with techn- technology, I wouldn't ever have to rest. I could just keep learning and keep taking in information. You'd have to plug yourself in, but I guess you could still be charging while you're doing your research, I guess. But Yeah, yeah, you can reach. I'll, I'll tell you this. Just do it if you're sick of cook, cooking stuff to just buy Soylent just drink Soylent eight days eight eight times a day or whatever no 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 as long as I am an organic Soylent being green, I'm gonna at least Do eat that. things that I want to eat alright well yeah I mean I wouldn't want to drink Soylent Green but I'm just saying you know yeah I'm just saying I, I'm, I'm gonna you know I'm not gonna fight it as humanity starts, you know, becoming more and more symbiotic with with technology, I'm just, I'm certainly not gonna fight the process because it just kind of streamlines everything for me you know it depends. You know, I, it depends. I don't know if I want to go get some kind of, like, eye implant or something. I'm going to go get one of those fucking Dick Cheney hearts. 
Yeah. Live to be 117. What a bag of shit. How old is Dick Cheney? At least 117. Well, he's old, I think, for sure. It's the anger and the racism swirling around in him that just keeps him going. Arr. That's the problem. That's the problem with being a human being. If you take shit easy and you're just like an easygoing person, you know, like a bus will hit you. But if you're a hateful bag of shit and all you do is serve to be a all your life is is Live just forever. being a parasite. Yeah, dude. It's like luck is always on your side, yep. no matter what's going on. It's 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 so disgusting, and people people still have the audacity to just be like, "Oh, God's got a plan." Does he? Does he? Was that lump in your tit part of his plan? Right. Of course they don't have. Yeah. There's no plan. There's no plan. Fucking a. You gotta you gotta accept that. There's no plan. Yeah, it just gets it gets daddy worked up sometimes. I get hot. You know, I get hot when I start thinking about that shit. No, I get it fucking it's just i don't know it's it's one thing after the other and it's just you know i think what it is i've become i've become a little bit more critical and uh skeptical you know ever since the whole beginning of this uh virus thing mm -hmm. it's made it's made certain paranoias and certain like little idiosyncrasies i have it's it's kind of like put them under a magnifying glass in a way i notice myself being like even more overly critical than i already am and it's just you know, like, like at work, for instance, you've seen this firsthand, how if enough people come up to the register and hand me cash, I, it's like, I, I was taking it as a personal slight. I mm. was taking it as this person doesn't give a fuck about me. So I'm not going to treat them very well either. And you right. can't, you can't do that. Like, yeah, it's stupid to use cash during a pandemic, but at the same time, the virus isn't going to cling very well to a porous material like cash. It's not hanging on to it. Yeah, so I kind of like, you know, especially last week, you know, I had a I had a major shift in attitude because I was just That's allowing cool. myself to get, you saw it. I mean, you saw it every time you'd call me at work and stuff like that. I seemed to like, I might start off okay, but a few customers come in and I handle cash or like they come in so many times that I just get inundated with that dinging noise in the background. That's another thing that was setting me off. But I was like, dude, you got to fucking calm down. Like this is, this is people getting through it the same way you're trying to get through it. And so putting yourself on equal playing ground or an equal, an equal playing field with other people around you that kind of helped me level out, I guess level playing field. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't fucking speak. I'm full of chicken and weed. <laughs> it's the chicken and weed sweats going on. That was some good chicken, dude. Not bad, you know? Yeah. And I want to say Adam and I, <laughs> Adam and I, we got our um, brass tax test shirts in, you know, we had a couple t-shirts printed. We're, we're working with a couple of uh, different companies to see, what materials and horse shit we want to go with. The ones that came in today are are good, nice quality t-shirts, but they're so fucking thick, dude. Like I was sweating my balls off when we were doing the walkover. Mm. And I'm like just noticing now as the war as the room's starting to warm up a little bit, I'm like, fuck, I probably should have like kept the dashiki on. Should have. I I probably need to buy more dashikis anyway. That's just like a good summertime clothing. Is that the the technical term? Yeah, yeah, for that one in particular. There's like there's a bunch of different names for those types of shirts and I don't know them so I just oh. call them all dashikis. <laughs> I bet there is a lot of different names for those. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. Like it's, uh, it's quite a few. Yeah. Let's uh let's go ahead and move into some bad news. Your favorite sound drop. <laughs> well, I've got some good news and some bad news. Do ya? Give me the bad news. What's the bad news? They're dead. This whole thing fucking sucks. I mean, this is good the news. What? We never has any good news. Well, no, that's the point. It fucking sucks. <laughs> that's the whole point of that drop. Well, there you go. There's nothing of substance going on. Just got the inside on that. Also, I just wanted, I needed an excuse to uh, get a uh, Tango and Cash sound drop. Mm. I always do that. Um, let's see here. So the first one we got, the first article of the uh, evening here is, No masks allowed. Stores turn customers away in U.S. culture war. So this was only a matter of time um, before this happened because it seems to me uh, that this entire, the entire, uh, I guess, American public it seems like 50% don't give a shit and would prefer the masks out of safety. And then there's like another side of the fence where people are just like, this is an infringement upon my rights. And this really does put business owners and the state in general in a very odd place because the whole, 
the whole PPE thing is already kind of shaky ground constitutionally when you start trying to impose certain regulations um, about what people are supposed to wear, what they have to wear versus what they're suggesting you wear. Like some, yeah. you know, like some states are taking harder stances than others, obviously, and that's uh-huh. that's ruffling some plumage. But um, this is just kind of a weird thing because you know we saw we saw at the genesis of this entire of this entire virus issue that like. The biggest thing was people were kind of all on board with the mask thing. You know, they were like, fuck, get me a mask right now. But as the, uh, I think the more people go on about their daily lives and start getting back to normal, regardless of whether or not the threat is, is, um, any more minimal than it, than it was before, like that remains to be seen. I, I would say that things are probably just the same. You know, it, we, there's a lot of inflation with the numbers going on. There's a lot of underhanded shit happening in terms of what's being reported w- versus what's actually true. But it's weird that there seems to be this kind of like break off. And now it seems like it's just kind of 50 50. Some people are for the mask, some people are completely against it and are like becoming violent over it. Mm, there's some people that really are. Yeah. Big and time. it's. It's just crazy. Like, I mean, as soon as I saw this article, I was like, a big fucking surprise, right? But um, <clears throat> it's just saying that, like, you know, several shops around the U.S., they're making headline, headlines for denying entry to those wearing masks. Um, just like we've seen mm. Costco and other um, establishments where they're like, you have to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Like, even, even here today, like, so Adam and I went to the dispensary a little earlier today, and you absolutely have to wear a mask. Or else they won't serve you. And, you know, there was a guy that walked in there that was just like, what do you mean? They were like, yeah, you just have to get something to cover your face. And they even, they took it a step further. Now they have a sign up at the, um, up at the uh, place where they take your ID. Mm -hmm. And it just says, now you can't have a mask with vents on it. So if you have a vent mask, they won't serve you. You gotta be kidding me, dude. No. Wait, so now they're, they're requesting... Adam dropped his pen. <laughs> <A> specific, <laughs> that fucking ornate, nice pen. <laughs> a specific type of mask. Yeah, they're just saying. So they let me through with my stupid little like. I, I I'm literally just wearing one of those like skier kind of wind mm-hmm. wind resistant cover ones, yeah, thingies. You, you kind of pull up. Yeah. yeah, like a half mask. Yep. Um, that that flies. Wow. But if you're using a fucking mask with a filter and a vent, uh, like a vent vented on the side mask, they Ooh. won't allow that. That to me sounds like they don't understand huh. how certain masks work. That's interesting. I wonder why. Dude, I don't know. And Maybe they, it's like you can't if the cameras can't get enough. I don't know. I, I just honestly the profile of you or something. I don't know. That just doesn't make any damn sense though, because like I I walked in there with a full like all you can see is my eyes and my fucking True. luxurious wig. Hoo hoo. Shut up. <laughs> but no, it just, I, cause my mask isn't protecting me from shit. It's literally like I got it because work, um, requires it now mm-hmm. and they don't require the customers to that. We, we encourage it by, you know, we got a shitload of signs and stuff all over the place, but like we don't make the customers do it. And I feel like we have enough mitigating factors in the store. You got the things big sneeze guards. We've got fucking, uh, disinfectant everywhere. We've got gloves yeah, and mean, sanitizer. It's super sanitary there. Yeah, dude. And plus we're constantly cleaning. Like they got lucky by hiring a bunch of fucking like autistic neat freaks. You know, we're just always organizing and cleaning shit. But, um, you know, my mask personally, I know for a fact it doesn't prevent shit. You know, they, there's a thing they said, um, that if you can, if you can light a lighter or a match or something like that and put your mask on and still blow the flame out, then it's not protecting you or anyone else from anything. Right. It, and that's exactly it, what my mask is. It's like, I could smoke yeah. a cigarette through my mask and mm-hmm. have very little resistance. It would ruin your mask though. I mean, yeah. you're basically using your mask as part of the filter. That fucking be, smell like the set of snatch. That would be, that would be gross. Dude. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, that's super porous. Yeah. You know. Oh, dude, I that that acrid, weird, smoky smell. Like from uh, you, you, you I, I could only I could only say like if you've ever been into like a restaurant back in the '90s when mm-hmm. there was a smoking section, yep. like that smell. Mm-hmm. So that smell has always had a weird like. I know it smells bad, like sensory wise. Just you know, smelling it, it smells bad. But it also is like this. It's super nostalgic for me because it reminds me of uh, growing up. And going to my grandparents' motel, mm-hmm. they used to own this motel right there on the boulevard in Myrtle Beach. And it was right on the beach. And it's like where I learned to swim. It's where, you know, it's I just grew up there. You know, like my parents would drop me off there. I'd, I'd 
you just hang out but right. my grandparents would just chain smoke inside <laughs> and we'd all just be playing and shit like that and there's like a thick haze like a london fog of just straight up paul mall smoke all over the place and we were just playing in that for years yeah. but now it's weird because as an adult i smoke but i don't like to walk into a room and smell smoke but when i smell a room that's been smoked in for a long time it just has a different smell and it literally like just makes me harken back to my childhood it's the weirdest shit even like uh, pool halls, which they haven't smoked in them for years, you can still smell the smoke in them. Right. Kinda, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or like we were talking about the other day, how uh, you can smoke in airport terminals, like in those big glass rooms. I don't rooms. know if you can in any more of them, but. Well, when I flew, I flew back home uh, a little over a year ago for my sister's wedding. And uh, one of the, one of the airports I stopped in, I think it might've been, it might've been in North Carolina, but there was a big glass room of just people huffing butts in there. <laughs> and like I was telling you, yeah. you walk up to the glass and it's just this thin, gross, yellow film over the glass on the inside. And you can just, it's just, there's no way. There's no way. Like I'm not, if I'm, you're a bartender in there, you're signing your <laughs> life away. Basically. It's a hot box 24 seven. When you're in there, you want to go where everybody knows. your you're name. Like, oh, Well, I'm going to die of lung cancer. Might as well go out this way. Yeah, seriously. I, I, and then, like, my parents wondered why we had asthma growing up and shit. Like, I was like, I wonder what's happening. I didn't have asthma as a kid. And it's like, yeah, you didn't. You weren't getting hot box <laughs> fucking Winston Salem's from the minute you were conceived. It's a fucking, I don't know, man. It's like you don't need science to tell you smoking in a room full of kids or smoking in a room with a bunch of kids in it. Not the best idea, it's right? Great idea. It's like oh. the crack a window or something. It's like, nah. well, no, then you let the AC out. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking hot out You here. can't let the smoke out. No, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> Losing my buzz. Fucking, uh, so yeah. All right. So there's, you know, we got the issue with, um, now, you know, businesses are being kind of, in my opinion, they're being just kind of like, there's being babies. I get it. We all have our rights. We all have the right to wear masks or not wear masks. And at the end of the day, I truly do believe that in, in matters such as this, a business should be allowed to conduct business however they see fit. It's America. If they want you to wear a mask, wear it or don't. If they don't want you to wear a mask, take it off or shop somewhere else. Either way, go fuck your mother and quit complaining about it. That's the most annoying part of all of this. People just love to complain, man. That's the biggest thing. Whoa, uh, you know, they gotta be they gotta be mad at something, man. Well, yeah, yeah, that's especially right now because everyone's trying to be, probably be mad at themselves, the people they're you know living with or something. I think people are just pissed off in general just because pissed off people aren't working. Either they're not yeah. working or they are working and making less than they were when they weren't working. Yeah. There's just so many little like there's so many little slip through the cracks. It it just kinda like cracks. <laughs> cracks whack. It just it just seems like a lot of the shit that's going on is it, it just falls on the common man and it always feels like a big fuck you. Mm -hmm. Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck, like most of us are, you know, none of us are millionaires. The, the majority of us are not millionaires. We're not even, half of us aren't thousandaires. Thousandaires, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, it seems like when there's a breakdown in the system, it always falls on you. And the people that cause the trouble get away unscathed, and then they have the audacity. This is how I know most politicians, if not all of them, are just complete sociopaths. They go right back into the public eye, and they want you to reelect them. Mm -hmm. they didn't do shit no no i mean dude beyond that even I, this whole thing is coming it's affecting small businesses pretty pretty big right you know so <laughs> you and that fucking pen just yeah i'm letting it go <laughs> i'm gonna uh, get you a, pro a pocket protector <laughs> or like a string I was... oh yeah like a little lanyard yeah <laughs> all right. there's your pen you're gonna yeah. drop again that pen that pen has no gr that has no grip no it doesn't it's not very grip. That and you, you eat your chicken fingers like a savage, dude. Adam gets chicken grease and hot sauce all over everything, and then he, he wonders why he can't keep a grip. Yeah. No, it's good. You're naturally oily anyway because of your <laughs> Slavic so. background. Not true. But <laughs> no, dude, this whole thing with companies, there's companies posting record profits right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like and Amazon? Then, <laughs> Amazon, Walmart, and then... All these these new businesses or small businesses are just those are the ones that are getting infected. They're going out of business. They don't have bankrolls that they can, you know, protect themselves for this long. Well, that's another problem that we see in America. Or is at fifty like, percent capacity when they do open up. 
Right, right. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, it goes back to the same thing. It's like if you try to open a small business, you're still playing by the same set of rules as like us common folk. You know what I mean? You have to reach a certain level for any of these, any of these crises to be advantageous for your business. You know, most small businesses are, are living paycheck to paycheck as a business. Mm hmm. They're living sure. month to month trying to like you trying to just payroll. You got to do a lot. It's a lot of stress on that kind of stuff. Exactly. And I mean, I, I see it firsthand, you know, like I, I work at a small business. It's family owned. There's only like four of us that work there. And still the stresses, the stresses of a small business and trying to make it viable and, and especially profitable in times like these. I mean, thank God we're, we're working in the liquor industry because good times and bad, they're always going to come to us. I feel like if we were doing anything else, we would be fucked. Yeah, it's a hot, hot item to be in. To, regardless, it's a It's one of the oldest stores. Like, there's the oldest professions. There's the oldest stores. That's one of the first, probably. Right, right. You know. Yeah, not seeing a lot of prostitutes out this way, though. No, <laughs> speaking of old old professions, profession, but yeah. yeah, no. I feel like they're they've got to be taking a hit, especially if all these like these oh, uh, yeah, man. these cam chicks are taking hits. Mm. I read recently that uh, OnlyFans is getting rid of a lot of sex work and stuff like that. They're trying to make their platform a lot more family friendly, kind of like YouTube did. There it goes again. Yo, the pen, <laughs> just put the pen on the table, dude. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I That's said just keep it over there, and then you gave it back to me, so. This is why you shouldn't molest people. They, they grow <laughs> up to be fucking nervous. They're twitchy. They're always fiddling around with shit. Look at you. You're a mess. No. You're but, a drunk. No. What this is about. <laughs> So what we're going to have to watch out for, at least, is a consolidation of wealth. Right, right. That's going to be a problem. Like, if you have a lot of money right now, you have a lot of money right now. Companies or individuals. Well, naturally, that's what's going to happen. And right. how do we do anything about that? You can't do anything about it. But there's going to be companies just gobbling up other companies, things like that for dirt cheap. Right. You know, commercial real estate will be gobbled up for pennies on the dollar by big firms so it's going to be everything is going to get even more controlled by a small amount of corporations exactly and that that it's, right. a, con it's a consolidation move that's what happened in 2008 but i think this will happen to even tenfold of what happened in 2008 with consolidation of wealth with amongst you know the largest companies just gobble up everything i completely agree and i think that um i think that not only is that a certainty but it also gives a lot of credence and i hate to say this but it gives a lot of credence to those conspiracy theory theorists that think that um this was manufactured as a way to destabilize the economy and that would be the end game right i mean most of these corporations and and these entities that that you know benefit from these things happening this is part of their plan anyway is that not your plan as as a as a massive corporation to to consolidate as much of your wealth as you can and kind of gobble up your competitors and shit? That's that's your prime directive anyway. All this virus has done is put that in fast forward. You know, well, we're saving them a lot of time. Kind of, but it's it was they cheated even more so because a small business can't afford it. They can stay alive in this this environment and mm -hmm. they're getting big bailouts these bigger companies on top of the pre the record profits that they're making. So that's the biggest issue, and then no one's really bailing out or trying to keep the small businesses going or anything. Well, even like we saw, I mean, big business is right there to come in and scoop up those resources yeah. too, you know. In, in a second. And the thing that kills me is like, you know, yeah, they a lot of those businesses gave a lot of that or gave that money all back, but the time that they wasted caused a lot of those small businesses that needed that money right then. Well, they got it back to them so quick because what they really used the money to do is just share buybacks. So they bought back their shares. Which gives it a like a false inflation on the stock price. Right, right. So they can increase their bonuses on mm -hmm. an annual basis are based on short term. A lot of them are based on short term stock growth. Mm -hmm. So they do a big share buyback with bailout money. Their their stock goes up. They get huge bonuses. All while there's a disaster based economic disaster going on. Jesus Christ! It really does like I don't know. It it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Like you have to. That gap will just it's just keep keeps getting bigger. Right. You know that's basically what I'm trying to say is there's go, there's going to be a new divide after this even. Yeah. You know there's going to be a economic divide, and because there's going to be even blue class or, or blue class blue collar workers that can even work from home, and then the ones that haven't been able or can, are essential, and the ones that aren't and they've been out of work. Yeah. It's and they're they've dropped they they have no money now. It's a brand new they divide got a and conquer. Hundred dollar bailout 
that's not enough to really do anything. Right. You know, so that's going to make even another class of people. So it, it's going it, to, it really is genius though. Like of course. to not only, to not only widen the gap, but also create even more division, mm-hmm. Yep. you know, on the, on the lower well, that's the echelon plan, there. Right? It's I mean, yeah. yeah it, it, but well, I mean, now it just makes it, it makes the future seem so bleak and it makes the problem seem so insurmountable. Like from a, from an individual standpoint, you look at the scope of this issue and you have to, you wonder your, you wonder your, to yourself naturally, what the fuck do we even do? You know, we can't vote Damn. them out of office. They no. find there's too many ways around that. They don't get, yeah, they're all picked. I mean, you look at Obama city group, Gave, once he got elected, gave him, hey, this is who you need to elect for your cabinet. Right. Yeah. And that's something City that- Citigroup, a company- Yes. Gave him, hey, you need to elect these, put these, or appoint these people to your cabinet. And this is common knowledge. Like, and to, to think- Right. This is not even top secret. This is not a conspiracy. Right. This is a fact. And, and to, we just go on. And we keep lying to ourselves and right. people keep turning out to vote and stuff like that. For what? And it's just a matter of like, how about this? You know what the statement should be? It's like, you don't turn out to vote, but you do turn out- to say, knock this shit off. You know, how many times, I mean, and, and I hate to say that too, because I hate, I, I don't hate anything as much as I hate a fucking protest. Because very rarely are they organized. Very rarely is there any structure to them. There's just a bunch of people from a bunch of like, kind of subcategories and subgenres of whatever, like whatever political party they align themselves with. And it's just too much chaos to get anything done. But what we have to realize, I think the first step on this entire thing, first of all, like if we if we plan on on making any type of future for ourselves or for kids and whatever the fuck's going on, we have to stop allowing the division on our level. We have got to stop allowing this pre-manufactured bullshit coming from these mainstream media outlets that used to be reputable. It's not anymore. You cannot trust what's going on. On a, on a regular cable connection. You know what I mean? You, anything that you're seeing on your television, on the internet, the internet's become this watered down, convoluted, murky swamp where you've got to dig and dig and you dig have, to find to any unbiased digging. info. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes a lot of digging it's, to get a bunch of different opinions and kind of figure out what's really going on. You know? Yeah, but this is the thing is like how yeah. how insurmountable does that problem look to you to try to to try to get everybody on the same page on the levels that we're at the common people to get average everyday Americans together and to get them to stop fighting and stop allowing themselves to be so easily divided can't the rich and the most well the rich and powerful which is kind of synonymous but we're talking about ultra rich mm-hmm. okay I'm not talking about a millionaire eyes wide I'm shut rich about, yeah we're talking billionaires run the country type yeah of people I yeah. mean. Epstein money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a banker, right? <laughs> we'll get, we'll get to that later. Um, but that's the, the power that they have to do all of this. I don't know. It's just, when you get to that point, that it's, it's advantageous for, to have uh, divided lower classes. Right. Because if the classes come together and say, look, this is fucking ridiculous. These guys are just, they're nuts. Well, yeah, then it's just a night and day change and it's immediate. They realize how, you There's know. no tactical position to defend from the Hamptons, okay? So, right, <laughs> you know, but if everyone's divided, this class, <clears throat> this middle class is divided against or angry against this other middle class. Or I don't even know. think it would get to that point, to be honest. I think what would happen is if there was civil unrest to that, uh, that to that extent, what would happen is um, somebody would make an order, somebody would manufacture some kind of um terrorist attack or like a shooting or some kind of crazy shit to get us in a frenzy it would be done on our own soil by our own people because another thing that they have to worry about and another thing i think they know that they cannot do like some countries can Mm -hmm. is they cannot have the military actively go out and try to enforce any kind of like weird dictatorship type of or like fascist type of uh rule you know what i mean because right. you know our armed forces are just average everyday citizens who have families and friends and you know what i mean you would never be able to convince them to turn against the very people they swore to protect no you know so i think it would be something dirty like that it would be some kind of false flag bullshit it's, and again i hate to sound like that you know but it's not even false flag it's just a slow and progressive chipping away what's that yeah you yeah know? no you're exactly right so it's a slow drip yep or no, it's the slow knife. <laughs> well, to give you an example, like YouTube changed their color overnight and people flipped out. Yeah. How weird is that? And then they, so they went back to the old one 
in over a year, they just changed the shade slightly, slightly, slightly. Over a year, yeah, no one said anything. They didn't realize that by the entire end of the year, it was a different. There was a new color, but it was a, such a gradual change that no one knows. Could but. you imagine giving a fuck though? So it's a slow drip. Could That's you imagine drip. caring that much about anything? No, we're talking about restructuring the entire political landscape of the greatest nation on the planet. And and people get more worked up over the shade of a fucking website. It's insane. And that's that's mm-hmm. what makes the future seem so bleak is the fact that people are just so stupid. The average the common man is the reason why we are the way that we are and why we've been we've we've gotten to the point where we've gotten because there are not enough forward thinking people that can think from a place of uh, logic rather than emotion. That's the biggest issue we face is that most most citizens are hitting the streets and going out to these protests at a very heightened emotional state and they're unreasonable and the mainstream media is right there to capture their worst moments. Well that and these protests most of them are very small. Right, right. Um, I, I'm not speaking in any specific ones, but like, if, there, if there's going to be a real movement, there has to be a real movement. Well, even the one we yeah. saw here, you know, we could speak from experience, at least with the one we saw here at the Capitol. I mean, what, like 50 to 100 people it looked like? Yeah. I see that. them all the time. There's always a protest over there. Yeah, exactly. And it's all always, this, there was, so, there was like every, at least once a month, there was someone out there. Yeah. Doing well, something. I've, I've been out there waiting for you to get out of work and I've seen people with picket signs and it's like, what are they even on about this time? It's always fucking right. something. And that's what negates peaceful protests in the first place. It's what makes them kind of moot. It takes the power away from the protest. Yeah. Well, well, that's the thing is it is, it is possible to abuse your constitutional rights and kind of take away the impact. Right. You know, and that's something that we're seeing. And, and of course the media loves to jump in and, uh, The biggest problem we have in a lot of these protests, especially since the Corona thing, is like now you see these like neo-Nazi groups trying to attach themselves to all these different protests. And it makes it makes these people that are out there protesting that just want to get back to work and shit like that. It makes them all seem like they're fighting for the same thing. Like there's an underlying level of racism and everything. What if it's government plants that are doing that? I wouldn't honestly, honestly, Adam, at this point, nothing would surprise me. Nothing would surprise to, me to, at all to like, you know, devalidate if that's a word, the protest itself, yeah. they have government aid infiltrators that go in and just act a fool. Right. It just discredits, and discredit, discredits. That's, that's the word. Uh, discredits the entire protest in itself. It's fool. Uh, we're going to laugh it on the news now. I honestly, just, I, you know. I would not be surprised in the least. Uh, we've seen shit like that happen before. You know, again, They'd used them before. Exactly. Again, not even a conspiracy theory. No, not a conspiracy. It's fact. <laughs> so you think stuff changes? Uh, no. Well, you, I mean, do you think stuff changes really? Nothing changes. Adam. No, they're going to do the same thing. Jesse knows. Yeah. They're putting thermite paint on the Tell back of ballots. If he runs for president, I'm voting for him. That's well, it. Yeah. Just, I mean, you got it for the meme. <laughs> I'd love to say. Yeah, I'll take him over anyone. I uh, know I would do at this point. I mean, at this point, it's such a joke anyway. If we ha- if we if he ran and we got another reality show star, I mean, this is the thing. We just we just keep going through levels of famous. It's like we went through uh you know a real estate tycoon who was also a reality television star. It only makes right. sense to go from that to actor, professional wrestler, conspiracy theorist, governor, television host, Navy Seal, Navy. Oh yeah, a fighter. <laughs> I was a Navy Seal. I forgot fighter, governor. I sued Chris Kyle's wife in a court of law. He won. He really did, man. That I mean, it, he really lost a lot of love for that one, dude. Didn't he get like uninvited for uh, to the to the seals gathering or whatever the fuck he used to that annual party he used to go to? Potentially, yeah. I don't know, but I mean, you the, know, it's really hard to win a defamation suit. So, well, it's also really hard. There must have been some compelling evidence. It's really hard to like Jesse Ventura too because of the shit he says and the way that he drives points into the ground. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, pal. You yeah. believe what you're doing. Yeah, he's always like, always very dismissive. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, well, thank you for your service. <laughs> That's another thing. Yeah, he's got to thank you for your service. You know, if you didn't serve in the military, you you're not even allowed to fucking argue with him because that somehow makes you. Well, that'll get you. So then he doesn't have to have a conversation real quick. True. It's like telemarketers. Like if you're disrespectful or like, no, no, like a, right. a support line. If you're, yeah. if somebody's like fucking with you on the support line, they're not doing their job and you get any kind of like 
uppity with them if you get like if you say a swear word or something like that they can just be like all right have a good day peace and yep. hang up on your ass gotta go well i mean you don't get paid enough to get sworn at so not at all not at all i never blame them that's why like i've gotten worked up on calls like that several times but i never i never act disrespectful to people on the phone because your job is calling job strangers sucks, and stuff yeah dude i know sucks, you dude. i know they don't want to be doing it any more than i want to be answering the they phone do they do not that job sucks dude I know it's and it's weird too because these are the things I realize about myself. Like some things get me really fucking hot, and I start getting <laughs> hateful over them. You'd think telemarketers would be one of them, but it's the exact opposite. It's like I just well, feel their pain when I answer the phone. <laughs> if you work for like you're calling your cable company, you're calling your cell phone company, or whatever, right? Yeah, but if you're selling stuff over the phone, no, 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 different game. That different game. That's, different. Game. That's what a telemarketer is. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's good. I, don't I say guess you feel for telemarketers, but no, I I feel for support people yeah customer service support people, yeah for sure yeah because that yeah. just sucks you know it's you're 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 having to fix everybody else's problems and shit it's like you don't want to be doing like, this i don't know what the fuck you're doing dude like yeah you know what dude <laughs> <laughs> i haven't gotten a, a like a legitimate telemarketing call in a very long time Nah, i did get a text the other day asking from some poll group poll group huh well, who knows? But they're like, "Oh, would you or would you not vote for Trump?" I'm like, "What the fuck is this shit?" That's so weird. Where do they get the information from? That's another I thing know. I really don't like is that companies are just allowed to they sell your information. To sell your information. Your information is so valuable. You should be getting some kind of like government stipend from from the well, sale of your own information. That's that should how be Google makes most of their money. I mean, Gmail's free for a reason, dude. That's a good point. Okay, so that that's why it's free, and you basically have unlimited storage on there. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think? What you think? Actually, just being benevolent. It's no. There's a lot of credence to what you're saying because let me check my uh, Clearwater Revival. There is, dude. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here on my personal email, I have. Let's see. I have five thousand and thirteen unread emails. I don't do shit no. with my email. <laughs> no. Looks like my work email. I remember the. Uh, so my job before last. I was, I opened up my uh, email on the work computer and one of the chicks I worked with, she walked behind me and saw my email and was like, dude, I'm getting anxiety just looking at your fucking run red email. To me, it's just, it's fake. It's fake digital mail. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel any kind of imperative to open it up. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I'm glad we're switching over to a new mail service mm -hmm. at work because I'm glad. So I'm going to have a new email address. Because mine was a fucking, it's a mess, dude. And I, I let it get, I let it spiral. <laughs> yeah. And I, I can't, I, I get too much anxiety. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So that's one of the rare things in this world that like doesn't really but make like me my feel. mailbox, definitely mailbox at like personal. Yeah. I never check it. Okay. And Maybe I have that's like what bills it is. associated with everything. So oh, okay. I probably get <laughs> fucked over all the time. Like, but, I don't check it. So, okay. I, when it comes to the show email, complete opposite. Every, well, that's everything different. gets checked. That's different. I'm saying personal email. I'm not trying to check it. I don't give a turkey what's going on. Exactly. Whoa. I don't care how many how much in back taxes I owe. It's no, no. You you know where to find me. It's another fight for another arena. Yeah, I agree. So I've got a um on the opposite end of the whole face mask thing. I actually have a uh, little video pulled up because apparently this is okay. So on the opposite end of the coin here, these are people just <laughs> losing their shit over being told they have to wear a mask, <laughs> and again. Every time these people get caught on camera, they always look like they're crazy people. This does not look like a normal man. <laughs> I would say he looks like Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> That's he looks like Lenny Kravitz, like Lenny Kravitz in his in his fifties or sixties. Yeah, isn't Lenny Kravitz is in his fifties? Isn't no, he? is he? It's so hard. Black don't crack. So like, oh, I feel like oh, sound like Biden. Oh yeah, no, I need to be careful. But no, that's uh, that's one of those things. Is like, I don't know. Lenny Kravitz has been around for a long time. I feel like he he should be fifty by now. Hurry up! I want to I want to play this video. I'm gonna play the video while you're doing that. He's fifty five. Oh, whoops! He's fifty five. Mm -hmm. Damn, dude! I didn't realize that. Hold on, I'm switching over the little speaker thingy real quick. I'm a I'm a I'm the least professional broadcaster there's ever been. But, uh, okay, so this is a man losing his shit, and I think this, uh, actually, this might be a compilation. So this particular guy, he's, like, out in front of a Publix, but let's go ahead and get into it. You are in violation of my 
constitutional rights. Across the country, tense moments caught on oh. camera as more businesses enforce Did that dude, new rules. That dude got flipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy used some like fucking judo or some shit. Across the country, tense yeah. moments caught that was on a chick. camera <laughs> as more businesses enforce new rules to stop the spread. <laughs> Uh, what wait, the fuck? Uh, wait, was that a chick? Dude, go back. Okay. That was a woman. No, no, it wasn't. Yo, that. Oh God. Across the country. Oh, that's a, a woman. Chick, dude. So, okay, this chick. She's pretty tall, though. So this cop, it's definitely a Walmart. That's definitely the the entrance to a Walmart. This chick is standing up. She's got her hands behind her back, and I guess she's resisting because. The cop is holding her hands while they're behind her back and they're cuffed. He's grabbing under her pussy and lifting her up and slamming her on her face. Yep. She was resisting. Stop resisting. Country tense moments. Oh, oh that's like a WWE dude. move, dude. Businesses enforce new rules to stop the spread of the virus. This customer... Dumb bitch, talk back now. <laughs> Gave her the fucking COVID drop, dude. Yikes. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> the COVID stunner. The Miami Beach Publix <laughs> went on an explicit rant after being denied entrance for not wearing a mask. I'm filing a lawsuit. Costco announced I last want week to that get away. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fly away. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Kravitz is hard up right now, man. He doesn't want to wear a mask. Oh, dude, I guess so. Yeah, all that fucking. I'm surprised TMZ didn't pick this up. USA Today, really? He spent all or of his American woman money. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the poorhouse now. Poor guy. Rest in power. That all shoppers <laughs> must wear a face covering that covers their mouth and nose at all okay. times. The policy quickly sparking backlash on social media. Seriously considering canceling my Costco membership, going to Sam's Club instead. What a bunch of tyrants. But Con she also said sick of it sick at the end of, of that. Look oh. at these people. Sandra and Shannon. Bunch of... Bunch, bunch of, Karens. of Car Yeah, exactly. Bunch of Karens taken to social media to fucking yell. There's some Karens out there. You know, if they took five minutes to just go outside and act like a normal person, they might get a fucking dick in them every once in a while and not be such yeah. a giant bitch. That's not how Karens operate, dude. I just... I hate it. I hate it. It's... it's we live in a world of... Not, even before the virus, we live in a world of just repressed sexuality. People are not getting enough sex. That's why people are going out there. You got these fucking incels running around shooting people up. You got these fucking Karens running around calling the cops on black kids just Same trying thing. to sell some water. Yep. And and then then now they're they're like turning their their sights on fucking Costco and these places that are just like, look, dude, you, the the fact of the matter is, none of us want this to be going down down right now. None of us want this to be happening. Just fucking shut up and deal with it until it passes. There's nothing we can do about it right now. I hear you, but. I was going to say that I knew there was a bug coming. What do you got to say? Well, it's also about freedom, man. I don't want to sound corny, dude. It doesn't. And that's a problem, too. It's I get also, it. It's also like, you. what do you mean? But until it gets better. Well, who dictates it gets better? Who says? Because I don't see it getting, it's not spiraling out of control at this point. There's not hospitals in Colorado that are overflowing. That's a good point. Yeah, you're right. It's most likely the opposite right now. So, well, you know, who decides? Here's the problem. Who decides when we can be... In a democracy again, it's dangerous. So That's a very good you question. You need people to check that, even if you know it's, it's some corny, corny ass Karens, but at least someone's checking something because you know what it sounds like. It sounds like you're white knighting for Karens. <laughs> no. Are you hard up for some puss, no. dude? No, definitely not trying to hang out with a Karen. But I'm if you're saying. insufferable and you're down to throw some puss at Adam, no, let us know at therealbrasstax at gmail dot com. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just, I, I get it. People are mad. What, what am I doing with a mask? What's a mask doing? I personally enjoy it just because, well, as a... Anonymity as, of it, I'm sure. That's why. Well, just as a self-proclaimed So when you go on line, Grindr, oh, now it's really anonymous because there's a guy, the guy that's, you're banging has a mask. Anonymous, uh, an, <laughs> anonymity mm -hmm. takes the shame out of it, and that's part of my kink. So, like, no, no masks. I got to feel the full force of what I'm doing. That didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make a gay joke on myself and just fucking drive it right into the fucking towers. Well, yeah. Steered that plane right into the towers. Uh, no, we were doing a, a, a Pearl Harbor. She's dead. <laughs> Sorry. We were watching The Sopranos earlier today and it was one of the earlier seasons and man, you see those, you see some of those shots of the New York City skyline and it's like... Gobble ghoul. <laughs> oh. 
definitely not as dense looking as it used to be. Mm. A little bit more space in the skyline these days. Well, no, the the Freedom Tower is up now. So. Well, yeah, but that took what fucking like three decades. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be done in, in like 2010, I think, or something. Even before that, maybe. Isn't it? Isn't and, it like, still they, not fully done? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. That they money still got it done. I want, I'd like. To, I'd love to know how much corruption and horse shits behind oh, that fucking monstrosity. Dude. 100%. Because, I mean, think about it. That's Absolutely. the easiest thing to do. It's it's related to 9-11. Even 20 years after, dude, it's still like, oh, shit, 9-11? Here's the money. Don't ask any questions. Whatever happened to the Victims Fund, too? That's another thing. John Stewart was on that, dude. He he He's the one that saved it. They, they like, he made a point, and they actually had to, like, front in front of Congress to get re- it renewed. Yeah, yeah. So he's the only one that has kept it going, because if it wasn't for him, it'd be canceled at this point. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. And they're all dying from fucking cancers. And then there was also, right after 9-11, the whole Red Cross thing, where they fucking, yep. what, they, didn't they just, like, didn't a bunch of money just disappear out of nowhere? Well, and then there was want to talk about money disappearing, that you can talk about money disappearing in Iraq. Uh, well, yeah, that's another good point. Or how about the euros I mean, dude, and dollars in the billions? Well, dude, our disappear? fucking... Disappear? Our fucking vice president... Disappear? Step- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Our vice president stepped down as the CEO of Halliburton, mm, yeah. took office, they go into a war, and who gets a shitload of contracts to go up in there and rebuild that fucking war-torn shithole? I'm sure it's not Halliburton. Oh, well, you would be wrong, sir, <laughs> because it's Halliburton. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. There are no slouches yeah. over there. They know what they're doing when it comes to doing some dirty shit to make a buck. They're but, right there. But now everyone's like, it's like, oh, man, George Bush wasn't that bad. It's like, motherfucker, Shit. that guy fucking fuck, sucked a bag of dicks, dude. He got us into two wars that we're still in today for no reason. He walked outside on the White House lawn. He looked out at America, and he said, You can get a doggy style, you can get a ling on your side. Those are your only choices. This is my house, and I get the same. You heard the man. Yeah. Let's get on with this video. Oh, sorry. Costco supporters <laughs> Why are you sorry? also took to Twitter agreeing with the safety protocol, writing, Thank you, Costco, for protecting members and employees with masks. Hashtag use In mask. Michigan, the face mask rule at a family dollar store turned deadly. Oh. Police say a security guard was shot after getting into an argument with a customer. Four family members. <laughs> Why are you... <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. The man got shot. I don't. I want to. Let me preface this by saying it's terrible. The man got shot. But your whole life, your mom and dad fucked to conceive you. Your mom carried you for nine months and shit you out, raised you, fed your dumb ass. You grew up to be an adult. All of it amounted to getting your head blown off in a family dollar over some fucking masks, dude. That was it. There is some kind of dark comedy in there somewhere, but it's like, what? First of all, where is this area? Like, what is this area where the family dollar needs security? Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I think a lot of family dollars are in not the most areas, <laughs> not the most advantageous There's, of real estate. <laughs> well, not all the time, but you know, it's a family dollar. That's true. Yeah, your dollar not- goes a long way. Yeah, you're not. Sure. <laughs> that was stupid, Adam. Adam just made the gesture of like popping a bill out. <laughs> I also made the noise too, but yeah. Man, if only the cameras were rolling. It wasn't a fucking audio show. Radio Gold. Members have been charged in connection with the crime. This was extremely <laughs> senseless. Over a okay, here's another thing. These guys are. He's public speaking with a mask on. Okay, you can take it off, dude. We got it. Take it off. You're talking. You don't need to wear a mask. You're six feet away from someone. <laughs> Take the goddamn mask off. Stop it. We got no time for that crap. Yeah. Oh, damn shame he's out here. got something to do. <laughs> Fuck, man. This was extremely senseless over a mask. This was extremely senseless, Adam. Extremely. <sighs> In Alabama, an off duty officer was seen oh. body slamming. Oh. <laughs> It was. That's he did grab. He basically grabbed her pussy. He gave her the old bowling ball grab. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was the point of that? You know how lucky this Alabama cop is. You know how lucky that the precinct is that that wasn't a white cop. Because this oh. dude grabbed this chick like a bowling ball, lifted her up, and she fell straight down on her face, dude. All the weight of her of her body, like a fulcrum, fucking yeah. going down on that hard ground. 
lucky her head didn't hit harder than that because she would have she could have broke her neck. Well, it's a good thing she had all the weave there. It's the weave helps. At a Walmart, when she allegedly oh, refused that. to wear a mask. What the fuck? <laughs> he was celebrating. He was celebrating. He was like, "Oh shit, this bitch got slammed." Dude, I've been, I've had those situations before where I've been out in public and like whoever, like whoever I'm dating at the time, inevitably you're gonna get in an argument in public. Something's gonna happen. You know, like I never like to argue in public. I stay quiet. But there have been many times where I wished, like you know, just some kind soul would come out of nowhere grab the woman I'm with like a bowling ball and just slam her face in the ground so that I don't have to right. deal with the repercussions. Right, exactly. So getting violent at places and forcing social distancing. Police you, arrested a 25-year-old who they say pushed a Texas park <laughs> ranger who was telling the group to stay six feet apart. An Oklahoma silly. City police say a woman opened fire when told she couldn't eat inside this McDonald's, injuring <laughs> at least two workers. Because of growing threats of violence like this, one Oklahoma mayor reversed his city's mask mandate. We didn't have mass protests. We didn't have, you know, sort of the armed vigilante. But we did have, uh, you know, folks at these stores who were put in a really difficult situation. Get a better States mic, dude. balancing safety <laughs> while trying to get back to business. Yeah. Uh. It's just, dude, the worst of humanity is coming out right now. And it's just everybody's looking like a baloney boy. It, it's it's impossible to to go out there right now and not see some shit. I've seen every time I've gone to the grocery store, nothing's happened to me personally, but I have seen people getting out of sorts with one another, and it it's due to nothing other than the fact that like we're all sick of it. Yeah, regardless of what side you're on, regardless of what yes. you believe versus what you don't believe, we're all sick of it. Fed up. Yeah, fed up. <laughs> eh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I am bombing a lot today. <laughs> so, okay, this is um, this was another thing we kind of saw this coming uh, a mile away. It looks like there's some more developments going on in the Jeffrey Epstein case. So, obviously, you know, people have been wanting to question Gislaine Maxwell for a very long time now. Um, a court agreed to delay the testimony of Jeffrey Epstein's confidant, Gislaine Maxwell in this civil suit. And it says right here that Maxwell 58 has not been seen in public in several months. And I think it's been closer to half a year at this Dude, point. It's at least she vanished like a fart in the wind. There was that weird picture of her that yep. a lot of people said was Photoshopped. Yeah. 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 I forgot about like, that. There hasn't been nothing And her dad, super wealthy guy allegedly worked for some intelligence agency. Not going to say who would be confirmed <laughs> on that. It's Adam was found 19 gunshots to his back. The guy <laughs> drowned next to his yacht. Oh, I mean, I think that they, that he was, tra he, they, some people say he was a double agent. So really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I haven't dug, but it's, that's all alleged, but she's connected the whole thing. Epstein never was, they say he was a financier. How did he ever start that job? He started yeah. out as a middle school math teacher for a private school. And usually there is, and you can see the beginning of somebody's career like that. You can course, trace the money back. Well, exactly. <laughs> and there's never, there's no trail. It makes no sense. Yeah. So Ghislaine Maxwell, are we ever going to see Ghislaine Maxwell? I don't know. Not unless she turns up as a corpse. I have a yep. I have a very good feeling that um, this woman is going. I mean, dude, she can go wherever she wants on the planet, and depending on the level of information but she's so privy can those to, other people. well, that's what I'm saying. A, 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 you know, depending on the level of information that she's privy to, which mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a great deal. Um, oh, being yeah. that close to Jeffrey Epstein, you're gonna you're gonna see mm -hmm. some shit. You're gonna learn some shit, um, and especially as close as they were, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they dated and shit like that. This is uh, there's no way that she is not. Privy. She was getting some of the chicks. Right, right. She was a good girl. She's guilty. Why aren't they? Why aren't they trying to bring her in as a fucking criminal? You need more they're women not even like doing her. That. They're, no one's. Where is the FBI on this? Why aren't they arresting her? Because they're in on it. <sighs> There's something going it's on. It's the cabal, Adam. They, she should be. She should be in jail. No bond. Well, yeah, absolutely. To 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 imagine in any way, shape, or form that this woman is not just out there. She's not. She's not. Uh, she she's hasn't, not a fucking character, innocent character witness. No, not at all. Not at all. There's absolutely yeah. no. She's culpable. She's in some way, shape, or form. She is uh, complicit right. in what went on. Ex absolutely. So, 100%. what? Let's see what's going on here. Um, it looks like she has been granted a temporary reprieve from having to respond to questions. So she's filed something. Yeah, so she is yeah. in touch with someone. Yeah. What are we doing? 
Go find her and break, get her into the fucking jail. So it, it looks like here. So it, it's um, she's ducking questioning from a civil lawsuit that's right. alleging that she committed sexual battery against a teenage girl. Um, so now it looks like Maxwell has been accused in several lawsuits of facilitating or participating in Epstein's abuse of women, young women, girls sought the delay because of an ongoing federal criminal investigation into Epstein's alleged co-conspirators okay. and because a victim's compensation fund proposed by Epstein's estate is said to be nearing final approval. Um, let's see, I'm permitting her not to respond to written questions and not, not to have her deposition. Magistrate judge Deborah Freeman said, that's weird. A woman is protecting this bitch. Who cares? It's about power and money, dude. Yeah, that's well, true. Women will sell out another woman. What you, that's yeah. What, what the fuck am I this? thinking? Women are more virtuous than men. Get no, no, out. God, no. They're no. all everyone's selling everyone out. Well, we're all fucking. We're all scumbags at the end of the day. Yeah. You look at humanity as a whole. Yeah, come on, scumbags. Right. Um. So okay. And then, then the judge said, "If this isn't forever, but at least long enough to let us know whether the claims process is likely to go forward." What the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? If it's just questioning. And stuff like that. Like, it, obviously, obviously, as shady as this case is, this bitch had something to do with it. At one In one capacity or another, this bitch she has something to do with it. facilitated it. She helped re basically trick these young women. She's like the Alex Young Mack. girls, not women. Young girls into, yeah. you know, doing all this stuff. Wait, wait. Did I get that actress wrong? Huh? Something, something Mac. Uh, the girl that was doing the Alex Nexium Mack? shit. I think it was. I think it was. No, no. Alex Nexium. Mack. Alex Mack was a um, was a Nickelodeon TV Nexium's show. Nexium's like a, isn't it a up, like a heartburn pill. No, no, no. The, I'm talking about the sex club, or the sex cult. Oh, Nexium, yes. where the guy was yes. branding people, and yeah. then he had a chick too, kind of like Ghislaine Maxwell. And she was super famous. Yeah, she was an actress yeah. as well. She was on Smallville and, and shit she like was that. Recruiting chicks and stuff. Allison Mack. That was her name. I was close. Alex Mack. Well, I said Alex Mack first, you butthole. Oh, well, but um, it was wrong either Colin. way. It's like last week when we were talking, we were saying uh, Frank Willard instead of Fred Willard. Oh, poor Fred Willard. <laughs> Bless up, rest in power, all that dumb Bless shit. Bless up. <laughs> but um, so yeah, yeah. So he had the same thing that Epstein had going on. And it seems like Ghislaine Maxwell was doing the same thing that this Allison Mack person was mm -hmm. doing. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? I think the scale... And the purpose was probably a lot different. Right. I think there is a whole connection with this Epstein thing that is has no relation to something like that. That was just a call. I do want to get his dick wet in that call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a this Jared Epstein Leto thing, thing going on. This Epstein thing is... Well, it's more serious. There's too many layers that have not been explained. And I'm not even talking... I'm talking pre-death. Right. That haven't been explained. Well, there's too many people so. that are involved. Too many people of too influence. Too many powerful people... You know, in the he it, the the his if you, you know, always follow the money, you cannot follow the money. Well, that's a problem because everyone else you can follow the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there has to be. There's he filed his taxes every year, right? So he's dead. Who cares? Release his taxes. I exactly. Want to see how this guy really made how how what happened? How did this money work? Because he was never really he, he was supposed to manage a hedge fund. He has no background in running hedge funds. Right, right. He was. It sounds like he probably was in the right place at the right time knew somebody that needed uh, him for no, a certain dude. thing i think i don't know it's it's, it's a tough thing There's, i think there was a i think the cia or some intelligence agency is oh like the reason he, in, he has his million he had his hundreds of millions that was a front he was he was doing he was doing these thirst traps and shit right you know for powerful people like he oh knows man what he had on prince uh hair uh, what uh what was it? Prince Randy Andrew? Andy. Randy Andy. Prince Andy uh, Andy. That was what, yeah. You know, so, and that's just the, the, that alone is a huge power structure right there. Exactly. And I would not put but, that past the dude, any government entity to do that. You know what I mean? We've done way right. worse. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I think it goes way deeper, unfortunately. I'm not a conspiracy person, but this just. You're starting to sound like one. Well, that's why I'm going to vote for Jesse Ventura. Run, Jesse. Run, Jesse. I was an insider. A fighter. <laughs> Jesse, run. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, pal. You believe what you want to believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can believe what you want. <laughs> if Jesse Ventura turns into Howard Stern real quick, they're ripping you off. <laughs> that brass tag's good. Yeah, Horrible wig. That. Yeah. Either oh. way, Epstein, it's a fucking shit show, dude. I'm going to go ahead and call it right now, though. Um, 
she doesn't make it to any type of trial or deposition. She dies or she um, disappears off the face of the planet, Whitey Bulger style, and they just she gets lost in the timeline. Yeah, I could agree with you, but for the sake of disagreement... What, what are we not entertaining you enough? What's going on over no, there? No, but for the sake of disagreement, I will go with the opposite result. They take her in eventually. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll just do wagers on either side. So. Yeah, let's do that. We should actually figure out... Um, something like that. And then we can also do a bet on whether or not she dies in custody mm -hmm. uh, after that, you know, <laughs> well, they, I feel like they would, they would still try to, they would still kill her. Even though yeah. it would be so obvious at this point, they would still do it. Be like, fuck it. My do thing it. is like, is my, and this is the thing I've never had money or power. Right. Um, I have to imagine at least from my ignorance standpoint, mm -hmm. it, it can't be worth it. It can't be worth it to constantly be watching your back. Like, how do you fool yourself into ever thinking you're safe or okay when you're on that level? I don't know. It's like being know. a cartel leader. It's mm -hmm. like being a exactly. drug lord. You like, would, how? Wouldn't you always be worried? Like, oh, yeah, is this guy I would. Ne you never sleep. You never, yeah. Like, well, that's the problem. Is uh, like, yeah, they uh, probably are. Right. <laughs> Especially one of these guys are going to kill you. Yeah. Don't you try and fuck me, Tony. <laughs> 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 Adam's uh, womb is so polluted. <laughs> Can't even have a little baby. Oh. Ravenga! <laughs> Ravenga in that tacky suit just takes a switchblade right at the ribs. <laughs> yep. That horrible facial hair. <laughs> you and Ravenga have the facial hair of Ukrainian sex slaves. <laughs> just fucking <laughs> That's not bad. Just little twink boy sex slaves. <laughs> No, prepping no. bowls i just shaved yesterday i noticed i noticed so did i my mom actually sent me a box like a little gift box of uh dollar shave club equipment which i really enjoyed it it's the best razor i've ever used and i hate to say that because we're on a, we're doing a podcast right now and they are not paying for that <laughs> but i did use oh, oh boy at least you know we're not faking it here on this site or i mean on this uh show you know, it's, you know, if I use something and I like it, I'll probably talk about it. But like, well, what? Bring that up. I'm going tomorrow. I'm going to the furniture store. For what? I'm going to get a big ass sofa. Are you serious? I'm fucking 100% serious. Like a sectional? So I, I will do a review on the sectional next week. <laughs> well, if you weren't uh, already on the edge of your seat, ladies and gentlemen, for next week, <laughs> just Adam's getting a new couch. Strap in. Okay. <laughs> Strap on. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never bought furniture i've never bought a piece of furniture new in my adult life well yeah you're a man i've always bought it used yeah i've like never from a buddy or something or like you know stuff like that <laughs> this will be the first time i ever bought brand new furniture as an adult you know what i always have shitty couches i'm like i got mad i'm like i just got to get a really nice couch i've never had a nice couch it's time dude you own your own home just sit there you, know. you have you have a grown man job you own your own home it's safe to it's safe to get yourself a sectional. You deserve it. You work hard ish, and it's it's time. I work. You know, and it, same thing for me. You know, I had to make big moves this this year too. The first well, piece I mean, of furniture big moves. I've ever bought, you know, was this desk well, and this go. chair. Well, that as well. Oh, actually. and the loft bed. Yeah, that's actually a true piece of furniture right there. That's true. And this yeah. chair, you know, that's brand. furniture for sure. It's furniture. Nice little like a little L shaped desk here. We're making moves. We're doing all right this year. We yeah. legitimized our show. We we have almost officially been back in action for a full year after uh, we we stopped and rebooted the show. Really? Yeah, because you and I took about, let's see, we took a year off almost. We almost took off a full year from the show, and then we restarted it last um, August, I think. Mm. So, yeah, it's oh, okay. come a long way since those okay. tiny fucking recording sessions in that tiny little uh, closet we were using as a studio at the time. With the Yeti. Yeah, Adam and I were sharing one mic for the for, for the first, like, what, like, five or six episodes? Yeah, the, probably the first 15 to 35, I'd say, man, yeah. Well, there's also, like, there's also, like, four or five episodes we've never even released. Lost episodes. Yeah, yeah. Lost we're, episodes. We're waiting until people actually give a shit about this show to release those. <laughs> Maybe that'll be some kind of, like, package deal that we do in the future. But, yeah. uh, ooh, you know what we should do? We still got a little bit of a uh, show for you. Let's get into Baloney Boys. Baloney boys. Big up, big up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You didn't get a Charlie M drop, did you? No, no, I'll do that next week. This week, um, so this week we have a return 
baloney boy. This guy cannot seem to stop making an ass of himself. So this week... It's a repeat offender. Yeah. This right. week, we want to welcome back the dullard that is Joe Biden. This guy, another one of his little... like He was on, uh, he was on with one of the hosts of The Breakfast Club, I believe it was. And Emilio Estevez? No, okay. <laughs> oh. All right. That's, uh, That's not that wasn't as funny as it as it sounded, but like I don't know why that got me. But mm. all right, no, the Breakfast Club is a uh, morning talk show. I believe it's on uh, Sirius XM, or is it just Sirius now? I don't. It's Sirius it. XM. Okay, yeah. it's on Sirius. But anyway, right. they had Biden on, and uh, Biden. You know, he it, he just speaks. It speaks for himself. I'm just going to play the video. You guys can hear this idiot. Here we go. And you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP. And this is Charlotte. Well, it's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. They don't have. All right. All right. <sighs> How did they? Why would they let him say that? You can't. This guy can't do anything live. He fucked up. The man said, <laughs> is a doddering old fool. How, this isn't even. This is par for the course now, as far as I'm concerned. And this is another thing too. You know, maybe this is another conspiracy. Maybe he was told to say that by his handlers. I don't even think he was told. No, he's just a fucking, he's, he's just, just a demented he's old just guy. Nuts. Yeah, he's, he's losing it. But they're going to replace this mug. Maybe this is what they wanted because they're going to replace him at the last minute, even though do you think there's with? been no vote to do that from, you know, people who are in the Democratic Party. Right. You know, so. Who would you think it would be, though? That's what I'm always interested in. Like, I heard a lot of chatter online. A lot of people want AOC, say, but she doesn't have that seniority. Uh Hill dog. I want AOC, but not for public office. I want her in different mm -hmm. ways. Nasty ways. Yeah, me too. Do some nasty yeah, stuff. She's pretty hot. Um, <laughs> no, probably it could be Hill dog. Rare, but Hill dog is a possibility. She probably win Cuomo. this time. Cuomo, really? Maybe. I don't know if Hillary would be able to win. I think people would really start fucking going crazy. You think so? If it was just I a think... repeat of 2016. Who knows at this point, dude? I mean, that's the fucking thing, dude. Like, it, who the fuck knows, dude? Reality is becoming stranger than fiction. It actually became stranger than fiction a long time ago. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I do think that people's overall attitude towards her would probably be a little different this time around. And that's due to a number of different things. I honestly think they're both bags of shit. I think anyone yeah. running for the presidency has, has just become such a puppet to get to that level in politics, yeah. you know what I mean? That they're none of them are going to be trustworthy. None uh, of them are going to have your best interest. Well, we at keep heart. talking about that, and it's always the Bill Hicks joke, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. The president comes into office, and then they show him the pictures of who really killed Kennedy. Here's the mar you know, the <laughs> fucking Area Fifty One shit. Be like, keep your mouth Area shut. Area Fifty One. Yeah, <laughs> Area Fifty One. You'll all be dead if it wasn't for my son David. David. <laughs> oh, you knew about the thing and the thing. How did the ADL not step in on that one? <laughs> Wasn't that... How uh, did Judd Hirsch not step in on that well, one? Well, that's what I'm saying. Himself. <laughs> Should have been ashamed of himself. What was he doing? He's shucking a jive in. Speaking of Breakfast Club, it's, he's come a long way since then. Oh. Jesus Christ. He's basically playing... He, he played the Uncle Tom of, of Jews in Independence Day. Like He was like a caricature of the Jewish community. How, how did that slip My through David. the cracks? <laughs> it's nuts. How does that slip through the cracks? I have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. Millionaires, he's talking about. He said, I want someone, something to do. I'm Charlemagne the God. I'm a fucking millionaire. I want you to do something for me. Is that what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, he no, said his community. Yeah, well, he, what, what, what's his community? Obviously, he means sure the black community. He's a millionaire. That's pro I thought that he was he was referring to the millionaire well, community. Well, this is the problem, is that once you reach a certain level of wealth and fame, your, your ethnicity is it doesn't matter you're you're playing you're playing for the guys with the money you know you're the one you're in a different level now you're no longer part of the common man you know what i mean and that's something that we all have to quit fooling ourselves into believing too we have to quit fooling ourselves into believing that just because somebody comes from a certain community or comes from uh something that we relate to that does not mean they have their best our best interest at heart they're going to pander for your attention to make you feel like they're speaking for you when in return, all they want is the money. It, the end game's always going to be money. Right. 
Yeah. You know, there's very little money to be made by fixing all these problems. There's not. You know what I'm saying? So of course, of course, it's you know, yeah, he's saying he's he wants something for the black community. I mean, I was just making a joke. Obviously, he's a millionaire. Well, obviously, yeah. but that's the thing is like you know, I feel like I feel like what when I see anyone of status with with a certain amount of wealth and stuff like that, yeah. I don't care who they are, where they're from, they automatically I'm just like, okay, dude, they're not anywhere near the reality that I'm living in. No. And that doesn't matter who it is. If you're once you're a millionaire, there's the reality of life is becomes much different. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And it's I mean, and this is a thing too, you know, Biden really fucked himself up. Like people I can't believe he said that. I well exactly. And it's yeah, you can only imagine more shits on the way. It's a it's a long you know, we got a long summer ahead of us before November and all that other shit. But um so yeah, people were taken to Twitter immediately. Well there still and, has to be a debate. You think yeah. he's going to oh, be able God. to debate? No. He might he, drop some N-bombs. He can't do a radio interview. Right. Like, I don't know, this guy debate. might fucking say the N-word or something. He's so nuts. How how insane would that be? Uh, like a presidential debate, one of the one of the politicians, one of the people running, just has a complete breakdown, and this dude goes into full fledged dementia. If it has to happen, it's going to happen now. Well, let us not forget that this man was also seen, it, or Biden was seen, not too long ago, campaigning with a dude that was the Grand Master of the KKK. There's a lot of shady people, Grand that, Master, or whatever the fuck they are. I don't know what they're. I don't know what their ranking system is. I know that there's some wizards. There's there's a cyclops of some sort that I've heard. Um, I'm quite familiar with this. It's a bunch of edge lords in robes, dude. Of course they're going to have edgy, stupid little names. And I think there's wizards, of course. Because mm. like anything, uh, are there dragons? I think we can assume right now that if you're in the clan or you're like one of these white nationalist dudes doing marches and stuff, you ain't getting no ass. So of course you're hanging out with a bunch of other dudes, fucking calling yourselves wizards and grandmasters and cyclopses and shit like that. Well, I don't know if the KKK is there a big KKK around. I don't think the KKK is big anymore. Uh, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of fucking closet racists well, running around, but I don't think. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I'm sure there's. Plenty <laughs> of that. But. Uh, but no, I, I honestly I would be surprised if there were more than like 15, 20 KKK members around you know? <laughs> in the world. What they should, globally, they're, I feel like they're heavily outnumbered at this point. <laughs> how do you how do you even like this is my thing too. I don't like any organization that has to wear masks and cover up their identities and shit like that. To me, you're just a fucking it's pussy. the perfect time for them. Well, yeah, right. They're just wearing masks. KKK is the only people that can fucking shop at Costco like, wow. anymore. That person really cares about their health. <laughs> All I can you see got, is their eyes. You got people walking up to guys dressed up like clan <laughs> clansmen. They're just shaking their hands and shit like, thank you for your service. Oh, no. Oh, shit, man. Uh, but yeah, a lot of backlash on, on social media right now. Uh, Biden, really, sure. Biden really stepped in it. Frontlash, backlash. A lot of people taking to Twitter telling uh, Biden that he has no I mean, come on, right dude. to speak on behalf of the black community. No. I, think, I don't um, think anyone... You can't... The thing is, is it a monolith? If every black person think the same, well, that's the thing it's like too. Someone saying speaking for the white community, like, well, yeah, it's ra it's racist on so many levels because he's basically just he just um, pigeonholed or he basically just relegated the entire black community into like being right. the same people and having yeah. the same paths of thought. He basically just stripped everyone of their individuality in yeah, an what entire if community. We're planning on voting for Jesse Ventura. I'm telling you right now, dude. If I'm telling you, if he's going to run, he needs to do it this year because there is no other conceivable scenario Jesse, where he got to get, get out there, dog. You got to run, man. You God. ain't got time to bleed, dude. Dude, who would his VP be? Tulsi, Brutus the Buzzer. Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> Tulsi, if he knew no. what he was doing, Tulsi Gabbard, dude. No, I want, I want cool. Gold dust. Go <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Brutus and Beefcake Barber, but <laughs> or Haystacks Calhoun. Well, yeah, but Gold Dust targets another demographic. You know, he's bringing in everybody. Oh, that's true. He's yeah, LGBTQ friendly at that point, right? Yeah, that's true. Or he could, um, if he wanted to get the Hispanic vote too, he could get a shovel and go dig up Ray Mysterio Jr., hook a car battery up to him, and get him back up in there and running. You wouldn't even have to worry about the skin deteriorating because you throw the mask back on him. He looks good as new. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jesse needs to run. Hold on, I gotta give myself something. <laughs> Continue. No, no, <laughs> no, Jesse needs to run, man. I want him to run with um Tulsi Gabbard, dude. Realistically, yeah. Yeah. Realistically, That's I would. I'd, yeah, I can get on board with that. 
Um, I think though, like, all right, if you had to choose his VP from any of his movies, who would it be? Can't do Schwarzenegger oh, though, because okay. he's well, already. What, 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 what are we doing here? Well, he's then? already ran for office. He's not. Well, actually, he was a governor. Jesse was a governor. They could both. Ooh, I don't know. That might be a dream team. I don't know. I'm just spitballing over here. I don't I know like, who else I would. Um, or um, who else was he? Let's see. We could do. We could do. Uh, I can't remember his name. God damn it! Why can't I remember his name? He, I think he was in Predator too. He's the. Um, Predator number two? No, 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 no. the first or as one. Well, oh. um, what's his name? He's also a, a biochemist. He's like a really smart Dolph Lundgren. Was Dolph he in Lundgren Predator? Was not in Predator. No. Well, I'd like to see Dolph Lundgren uh, run for office because I really like that dude just in general. I think he's a fucking awesome guy. I think he's super intelligent. He's all like, you know. Well, he'll fuck you up. That's another thing too. It's like I want a president who I don't have to worry about dying on you us. You don't have and... to worry about Jesse, dude. That 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 dude is still in really good shape. No, I'm. T that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I want him and Dolph right. Lundgren in there yeah. together because regardless, you got a powerhouse. You meet. You're meeting foreign people. You're meeting foreign. You know, ambassadors and stuff. These mugs come in. Mm hmm. Dude, oh my God. And how American would that be? Dolph Lundgren and <laughs> I know that's right there is an oxymoron, but like Dolph Lundgren <laughs> oh, wait, and. He can't, though. He's not American. Jesse Ventura will make a, right. a concession. Right. You know, there, there'll be some concessions made. Yeah. Trust me. I mean, dude, look, art is imitating life right now. It's not out of the question. True, true, true. true. But to have yeah. those two fucking just like sleeveless suits guns blazing walk into a fucking meeting with china or some shit like that and they just sit down and they put their feet up on the desk let me tell you how it's gonna be pal fuck you winnie the pooh yeah exactly <laughs> dude no Dolph Lundgren goes to pull the chair out for winnie the pooh he sits down he just fucking jing he yanks it out <laughs> war starts <laughs> immediately no it, like he makes him <laughs> stay sitting on the floor the whole time in the beam no, no they follow him into the bathroom he's like you sit down when you pee <laughs> <laughs> prison rules up here yeah, dude. Huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Oz. But no, that would be nice, man. Get some tough guys in there, flex on some people. I, Dude, I would love so every not, minute. Not some 78-year-old fucking old pieces of shit. Exactly. When they're making their fucking, uh, when they're making their speeches and stuff right. like that, when they're being sworn in, you just hear, you hear Hulk's theme. I am a real American. Is there not, is you find me a better jam than that song, I'll punch you in the throat, call you a fucking liar. I'll just, just listening to that song, that's what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just practice yeah. karate moves, start shadow boxing. <laughs> yeah. Light up a cigarette, start flash dancing <laughs> like Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Angry footloose Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Tormented teenage bacon. Me, me, me. I hate that movie because he's like 36 trying to fucking He's like 78 in that movie. He's, he's trying, trying to pretend to be, to be 15. Yeah. <laughs> no, what do you mean? Kevin Bacon's a pedophile in footloose. <laughs> Oh no! Oh Poor yeah! Kevin. I think before we get sued for libel or defamation, we need to get the fuck out of here. Could be slander. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us for another installment of the Brass Tags Podcast. It has been a pleasure. And uh, thank you guys for joining us for our, our first session back in the studio since the whole uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, started and all that dumb shit. We, uh, we're we hoping to be back in full force next week with uh, intern Logan back in here with us and all that bullshit. We're going to start getting back to normal. I'm expecting the new computer this week, so we will definitely be uh, playing around with some more live shows. Uh, make sure you follow us on all of our social media accounts. We're the Real Brass Tax on Instagram, uh, Brass Tax Podcast on Facebook, Brass Tax Podcast on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube and check out the uh, Facebook profile because we've been doing a lot more live streams there. So if you want some extra content, you want to interact with us a little bit, that's a good place to catch us. Um, if you have any thoughts, concerns, suggestions, uh, if you ever want to be considered to come on one of our hangouts, email me at therealbrasstax at gmail.com. Also, if you want a uh, Brass Tax sticker, we are sending those out for free at no cost to you, the listener. So again, contact us through any social media or through our email, and I will send one of those out to you as soon as possible. And until next week, guys, take it easy, be safe, and go fuck your mother. You're not going to leave your pubes in those, are you? No? <laughs> in the stickers? Yeah. <laughs> like Bell Court Shuler? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not putting your pubes in there. <laughs>